friend since 1995 Growing up, same street, you, me, my ride or die All the years it would grow us apart, yeah Moved away, but you're still in my heart, yeah Call you up, how you been, can we play and rewind? Yeah, boy. You are what you eat. So this is a highly requested video, career and job options for bioengineering majors. I mean, I don't know why you guys care so much about this topic. It's just your future. I'm just kidding. I'm actually looking forward to talking about this topic because I think bioengineering is still in its infant stages and I look forward to re-watching this video hopefully sometime in the future and seeing if anything's changed. I mean, assuming that YouTube doesn't take down my videos. My dancing is a crime, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did. But before we dive into this video, I just wanted to address some things that I've heard. So one of the things that I've heard is that people who majored in bioengineering engineering have a harder time of getting jobs. And so in terms of addressing this, I think the first thing that we need to tackle is the misconception that your major is what gets you the job. What gets you the job or the opportunity isn't necessarily the label bioengineering. What matters is you, your skills, and what you know. Bioengineering is like the title of a book, but you, yourself, you're the narrative. It's like saying, oh, I go to a target school, so that means I should have an easier time getting a job. In an interview, when someone asks you, so what makes you special? What makes you stand out among all the other applicants who have applied for this job? You can't say, well, what makes me special is that I go to Harvard. Harvard. What makes me special is that I go to a university with the number one ranked meme page in the world. You can't say these things because if your self-worth is so dependent on an entity entirely separate from yourself, then the foundation that you're standing on may not be very strong. For example, I never studied filmmaking or media in college, but that's never stopped me from making YouTube videos. But yeah, I think it's important to not subject yourself to one classification or owe your success or your ability to obtain an opportunity due to a certain classification of knowledge, but rather remain open and fluid to all types of knowledge. But anyway, going back to the point that majoring in bioengineering makes it more difficult to get jobs. Well, I think this is also dependent on the location or geography factor. Companies probably tend to recruit more from the schools that are closer in proximity to themselves, simply because they know more about the curriculum, the students and the majors, in the schools around that area. If you ask someone who studied computer science at UC Berkeley why they went to UC Berkeley specifically to study computer science, well, it's because there's this valley made of silicon. <laughs> the Bay Area. Oh, yeah. I need to get high off that startup culture. I need to breathe in the same air that Steve Wozniak exhaled. But yeah, going back to bioengineering, I mean, I think Genentech tends to recruit a lot from Berkeley students. San Diego's biotech scene also tends to recruit from UC San Diego, which has a really good bioengineering program. But ultimately, yeah, I can see that if you're in an area that isn't that familiar with the term bioengineering, it could be a little bit more difficult to get a job. Like certain restaurants don't flourish very well in certain locations. I mean, it doesn't mean that the restaurant is serving shitty food or the restaurant isn't good. It's just that the restaurant is in a region that doesn't have the audience that the restaurant is trying to attract. Unless it's McDonald's, I mean, they're successful everywhere. By the way, is there a McDonald's in Antarctica? Penguin McFlurry. No, my friends, there is not. So the second thing that I've heard, which is actually pretty spicy, is that bioengineers tend to make less in salary than other majors. And this is probably true. I actually don't know the average salary of a bioengineer. I, I didn't look it up. First of all, I actually think it's pretty good to look up these numbers 
numbers and statistics because it gives you a general idea of the success of a major and whether or not you should go into it. But I think another thing to keep in mind is do you want to become just another number that's a part of the statistic? Do you want to consider yourself as part of the average? Like in college exams, if you score average, you're not going to get an A in the class. In order to get an A in the class, you need to be one two standard deviations above average. You should instead have the mentality of, I want to be an outlier. Here's where everyone else is, but I'm fucking, I'm flying over here. It would be really cool if we all thought like that. But yeah, we're going off topic. So back to the salary point. I don't know who said this, or I don't know if anyone has said this, but status lags behind a generation. It's okay to do what other people think is crazy or unorthodox or out of the box. It's okay to train yourself with the mentality of, I'm not going to be just average. Imagine the first person who introduced oat milk to the world. People were probably like, ew, is that just the juice residue of oatmeal? Anyways, thanks for coming to my TED talk. Now let's get into the actual content of this video. Did you like, comment, and subscribe yet? So as a bioengineer, these are the five options that you have post-grad. Option number one, higher education. Option number two, employment. Option number three, start a YouTube channel. Option number four, go viral on TikTok. And option number five, make it big in cryptocurrency. So for the sake of time, I'll just be covering the first two options in this video. But if you're interested in option number three, you can now DM me on Instagram because apparently I now have an Instagram. For option number four, I can refer you to Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio. And option number five, that contact is still pending. So higher education. I'm not in any of these programs currently, but I have a few friends who are enrolled in them. So I can invite them as guest speakers to this channel if you want. The first would be a master's program. And I don't really know too much about master's program. The one that I do know about is the MTM one, the master's in translational medicine, which is joint between UC Berkeley and UCSF. I heard that's pretty popular. And I've gotten some questions on what subjects they should do in their undergrad and masters like should they do bioengineering in undergrad and then electrical engineering as masters or should they swap it vice versa and i think undergrad will be generally pretty broad whereas your masters will be more specialized so you should just pick whatever you would want to study to be more broad do that as your undergrad and then whatever you want to specialize in or go deeper in you should do for your masters and then the other higher education would be getting a phd and obviously this would be for the people who are heavily invested in research and I have some friends who are currently enrolled in PhD programs, so I can invite them to talk about their experience that they're having so far. And then another higher education option would be med school. And I've gotten a few questions about this on whether or not you could study bioengineering while being pre-med. And I've had a lot of friends who were both bioengineering and pre-med, and they seem to be pretty successful and were able to get into med schools. And yeah, I think it makes sense to study bioengineering as a pre-med major because a lot of the pre-med requirements overlap with the bioengineering degree requirements. The only exception would be your GPA may drop a little bit because you will have to take classes that are external to these pre-med requirements. So you'll have to take a lot of engineering classes where the likelihood of your grades dropping is higher than if you were to take non-engineering classes. But I don't think medical schools care about what major you choose. So if you're passionate about bioengineering and you want to go to med school in the future, it's definitely possible. Okay, so if you decide to go for employment after graduation, the way I see this is that you can either work for a large established company or you could work for a startup. And there probably is a middle category, but just... And I'm pretty sure the catch-22 scenario is pretty well known, where in order to gain experience, they require you to have experience. But then how can you ever start gaining experience if no one will ever take a shot on you? It's like trying to get an internship. What helps to get an internship is by having a past internship on your resume. But how will you ever get that internship 
if you never even have your first internship. <gasps> For employment, it's like entry level position, but five plus years of industry experience required. <gasps> but yeah, generally, I think that established companies probably want a master's. When I was interning at Genentech, I had a chance to talk to a few device engineers and I believe a majority of them did have a master's. And I actually think a few of them did the NTM program that I mentioned earlier, so the master's in translational medicine. But what if you don't have a master's? So the way I perceive this is that thing that can help people who don't have master's are rotational programs. I've seen that these rotational programs could be great stepping stones to other things. And the stepping stone to getting this rotational program because I've heard they are pretty competitive to get is by doing an internship first at that company. So briefly, the timeline is intern, rotational program, full-time device engineer. So I know that Genentech has a few rotational programs. Oh, I mean, this video is not sponsored by Genentech. The ones I can remember off the top of my head, there's just too many acronyms, is ODRP, no, ORDP and PDRP. And I believe both are rotational programs for two years. And now startups. Obviously I can't speak for all startups or all companies because they all have different requirements. I don't know, an example could be Neuralink. So actually I worked at a lab at UCSF for a little bit and the undergrad who was a year above me, so a year older than me, she went on after her bachelor's from Berkeley to work at Neuralink. And then another company that I've seen Berkeley alumni go off to work at is the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative in San Francisco, I believe. Guys, I'm just so stressed out. I don't know what waffle maker to buy. Like how thick do I want my waffles? One inch, quarter inch? Do I want round or rectangular waffles? Or do I want a spicy pattern like the Mickey Mouse pattern? What diameter of the waffles do I want? So in a previous video, or I mentioned that Berkeley offers four concentrations in their bioengineering program. And I'm sure other schools offer other concentrations that are maybe similar or different, but I'll just talk about these four because these are the four that I'm familiar with. So the first concentration is biomedical devices. So a career path for this would be becoming a device engineer and mechanical engineering and electrical engineering would play probably pretty big roles. And I actually think the term device is a pretty interesting term because the first thing I think of when I hear device is something with some circuit or EE backend of a product. And devices don't necessarily have to be classified under this definition. Device can be literally anything. Device could be chopsticks. Device could be your boba straw that you use to suck up your boba. Device could be a stretcher that takes a person from the ambulance and into the hospital. But yeah, I just thought that it's cool. Devices can be so many things. But yeah, in terms of device engineering for BioEase, they would probably have to do a lot of designing, testing, and regulation. So another concentration offered at Berkeley is biomedical imaging and yeah, I don't know too much about this, but I do know that you have to know quite a bit of electrical engineering for this. I took a biomedical devices slash imaging class at Berkeley back then when I was super speedy at solving circuits. Kirchhoff's law, V equals IR. V Oh, yeah. yeah, I just remember my professor telling me that it's really important to have understanding of electrical engineering when you're making these devices, but to also not forget the biological or human aspect. I mean, when you're making these devices that will eventually be implanted in a human body, the ultimate goal is to keep that person alive. And he was saying how he had past students work on a project and we're so focused on the technical aspects. How can we make the best possible circuit, but then completely miss the other side of will this human even live if this device was implanted in a human body? So yeah, theory is important, but so is practicality. I actually think it would be pretty cool if someone who decided to go into medicine studied bioengineering in their undergrad, because the devices that you eventually use to treat your patients will be devices that you actually understand the theory of its methodology. So actually, quick story time. I promise it'll be short. One time I went over to UCSF to just randomly shadow a heart surgery, which was really cool actually. But when I was in the OR room, that's redundant. 
When I was in the OR, I was surprised that all of the medical devices that they used during surgery had this label Stryker on it. And I don't know if you're familiar with Stryker, but Stryker is pretty much this bioengineering company that makes medical devices. And I don't know, I thought it was really awesome that me, as a bioengineering major, I could step into an OR and then see real time the application of a bioengineering medical device be applied within a medical setting to save someone's life. And another concentration is cell and tissue engineering. And I think this is the most popular concentration for people who are pre-med within bioengineering. There's lots of cells, tissues, and biology involved. And then the last concentration offered at Berkeley is the synthetic and computational biology. And for this, I'd imagine that it'd be heavily focused on research. So if you go into this, you would probably get at least a master's or PhD. If you've made it this far in this video, these are a few things that I would tell my younger self. The first being, stop wearing Birkenstocks. The last thing I would tell my younger self is, to prioritize impact. Whenever you do something or do some activity, don't treat it as a sort of checking off the box on a to-do list. Instead of really think about the kind of impact that you want to have when doing this activity. When pursuing bioengineering, what kind of change do you want to make? Run. Time to make dinner.